kept going on. And uh, what, something interesting happened at that time, I think, on the IRCs. The uh, people started to know each other because, uh, you know, when stuff, when it starts to go around for, you know, for a long enough time and people are using aliases, they'll stick to one alias eventually. So, so, you know, you did have some people getting favored, you know, some ideas getting favored from some people, some ideas getting not favored from other people, you know. And I guess that's kind of how I got to be a part of uh, what eventually would be a channel. Uh, one, of, one of the channels where all the kind of oppers and people who got, were a little bit more respected got into. Um, and that was the major centralization in the beginning of Anonymous. Uh, then actually on my birthday, on January 27th, um, Mark Bunker put out his, his video to, uh, to pretty much tell us that this is not the way to beat Scientology. You guys got to calm the fuck down. <laughs> you guys got to stop doing stuff that could, you know, potentially be considered illegal, you know, and you guys got to handle it that way. Um, a lot of people thought that uh, Mark Bunker was just going to become a target and everyone was going to, uh, you know, go and maybe bomb his site and, you know, do whatever. But everybody kind of embraced Mark Bunker. Um, and he actually was what led to the IRC exodus, uh, as I like to call it. Um, the oppers on, uh, on the IRC network that we were all using, one of which, in a minute of which is sitting right there. Um, they actually kicked off everybody, everybody. All of the Anons who were using the, that server at the time were gone. And uh, this was a couple of thousand people. And now we're thinking, well, how the fuck are we going to collaborate? How are we going to coordinate? This is really bad. Luckily, it only lasted three hours, because <laughs> while we were gone during the exodus, we all pretty much decided that, hey, we have to relax with the illegal shit because one, we can't do it anymore, and uh, two, you know, Mark Bunker had a lot of points. Everybody agreed with it. You know, that was one of the ways that February 10th got planned. Uh, that the uh, February 10th was when we decided to move it into real life, when we decided to, you know, stop being fat internet kids. And uh, I was, I was, well, I was fat. But then after the 10th, I got really skinny. Um, <laughs> and uh, to stop being fat internet kittens, kind of, kind of you know, run into real life, go see the organ person, uh, you know, tell them what we think, fucking hand out flyers, say weird shit to them, right? And I'll, I'll always remember the, uh, the morning of the 10th because I'm wondering what these other people are going to be like. These people who, for so long, if I said even the slightest thing that they disapproved with, would jump right the fuck down my throat and uh, be incredibly, incredibly mean. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I met up with them, first of all, the turnout was fucking huge. Nobody thought it was going to be. It was in, just in New York City alone, it was around 300-something people. You know, we had planned February 10th in every fucking major city worldwide. You know, uh, so just to be just in New York, we're getting fucking over 300 people. I'm just standing around like, wow, this is, this is fucking massive. I had no idea, you know. And uh, so I get there, and the people are just fucking cool. They were funny as fuck. Nobody could get a single phrase out without some other asshole saying something completely ridiculous. Like, everything was just a complete joke. And I'm like, wow. Everybody is, like, everyone was the bad kid in class. You know? <laughs> like, this, if this is class, everyone's just the bad kid in class. There's no fucking teacher and we're just going crazy. You know? Um, there was the code of ethics everybody knew. You know, fucking relax. Don't fucking step out into the street if the cops say not to. Don't punch anybody in the fucking face. Other than that, you know, I, we were chanting dick hair sometimes, <laughs> like, you know, whatever. Uh, I started the dick hair one, but fucking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just thought it was fucking great. Uh, and luckily, right before the 10th, uh, we already had the Ides of March already planned, uh, which was the 15th. You know, I, I actually seem to be a firm believer in, hey, if you're going to go and, uh, and jump into something and make it be like the first thing, you should always have that backup thing there so that, you know, if it does become a success, you could pretty much be like, hey, all right, let's do this again then. You know, then you'll have the same turnout. Um, so we did. And I guess the whole point of this was for me to tell you how and why uh, Scientology got my name and such. Well, during those first two raids, those first two protests, uh, they could see that I was, uh, you know, acting as a liaison with the NYCLU. You know, I was kind of running around in the front trying to, you know, help organize stuff and whatever. And, and they obviously saw that. My very flimsy Groucho Marx disguise didn't do a fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm almost done, so blah, blah, blah. Fucking. <laughs> and, uh, and that's actually how they got me. They probably followed me home or some ridiculous fucking thing like that. And, and uh, that's pretty much it. So. Now they know my name. They sent me all sorts of fucking letters and stuff like that. And uh, I'm definitely not going to go anywhere because this shit is way too fucking funny to me. 
But uh, we're going to be pretty much keeping the pressure on. We get a lot of fucking press. They look more and more fucking ridiculous all the time. And we just beat them up by being fucking funny, insane, weird shit. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, Pokey, you wanna you wanna pick it up uh, with your uh, explanation, man? Right. Pokey and on, ladies and gentlemen. Pokey and on. What's up? Yes, yes. It's it's appropriate to clap. Someone take pictures. Get his mask off. Oh no, they'll find me again. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <I> folks. <laughs> hey. Oh hey, it's Pokey. <laughs> yeah, they can't find where I live twice, so uh, I don't give a damn. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not really going to talk about family involvement in Scientology. I can talk a little bit about that if you want after the panel, but uh, like in a question and answer session, uh, talk a little bit about the bad shit they do, how they really truly ruin lives and you know all that unfun stuff, but right now we're going to keep it on the fun side. So uh, I'm going to start off by saying some things that I have written down and reading them with my eyes. So. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, I think we fit in here nice today because, uh, you know, Fox News said that we're a bunch of hackers on steroids. That was 2007. Uh, they also called us the Internet Hate Machine. That's a nice one. And uh, they, they recommend strongly that if you buy curtains and a dog, you can really protect yourself against hackers. That's a good one. Uh, I, I think that we should all do this. And we're also known for exploding yellow vans, according to them, too. Yeah. Well, this was a Rupert Murdoch network, so you know it was true. <laughs> uh, for the most part, I'm not that tech savvy. Um, certainly not in this crowd. I'm sure all of you totally surpassed me in every way, but, you know, uh, I guess I'm just humble. <laughs> um, I'm not really part of the internet hate machine. I only joined up with Anonymous as Chinology started, so Call me anonymous, call me a chinologist. If you're into that semantics, go have, a, go have fun by yourself. Uh, I'm going to be with these guys. Um, I really didn't know what anonymous was until, uh, until I saw the first uh, message Scientology video that we played just uh, before. Uh, I heard about them once in passing over the years, but um, I wasn't a huge internet user. Um, just sort of a, I don't know, normal kid growing up. And, uh, you know, I got my AOL CDs and uh, then drink coasters uh, over the years in, like, the early 90s. But uh, for the most part, you know, I had heard about Anonymous once when they sort of made the news, not even the Fox News report, when, uh, when Anonymous way back when decided to catch some pedophile because they thought it would be funny. And uh, as it turns out, it was. And it was also awesome. So, you know, yay them. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're a dick. You're making us sound like crime fighters here, come on. <laughs> All right, Batman, calm down. Um, <laughs> uh, so, fair, uh, he looks more like Robin with the goggles, so... Oh, screw you, man, <laughs> screw you. Put your aviator lenses here. <laughs> what are you, 70? <laughs> and your hat, come on. Yeah, okay, shut up, Vin Diesel. All right, All right cool. <laughs> So uh, really, we're a bunch of communist, Nazi, cyber terrorist aliens from the Markabian Empire being paid by the psychiatric industry to protest in order to push the homosexual agenda and make sure that alien ghosts remain imprisoned here on Earth. <laughs> all right, uh, all of those things are things that the Church of Scientology has said about us. I couldn't write this because I don't think that uh, unless I was wasted several times over, I could come up with something that dumb. Uh, these are things that the members believe because these people have been totally stripped of their rationale. Uh, no, thanks, maybe later. Um, but uh, these people, I mean, truly have no sense of critical reasoning. It's something that's taken away from them at some point, and it's, it's really sad because it pervades into other areas of life, including medicine, which, you know, uh, has killed people in the past because they refuse psychiatric care and uh, maybe get into that a little bit later but you know here in New York City Jennifer McDonald Cox the nice woman who uh, came out from the Scientology Church which they call orgs uh, probably gonna talk a lot of jargon here because Scientology is all jargon that's part of uh, part of much of cult mentality to begin with so when you're inside uh, you know what they're talking about you feel like you're part of the club. Everybody has the same words. 
and as an outsider, you don't know. So uh, I apologize for all of us if we start talking in, in gibberish. Um, but uh, Jennifer McDonald Cox, this woman with a mouth like a sarlacc pit, comes out, uh, comes out and yells at Mike here. And uh, she was implemental in uh, Buffalo covering up uh, Jeremy Perkins, who uh, un very unfortunately is paranoid schizophrenic, who his mother, L. Perkins, uh, was a Scientologist. And as becoming a Scientologist, um, she was denied psychiatric care. And because she was told that the psychiatrists are evil aliens from the Markavian Empire, as we are, of course, um, was told to take the son off the medication. And he ended up stabbing her 72 times. And Jennifer McDonald Cox was implemental, uh, was a big part of covering that up. These people are criminals. There's no other way around it. Um, but back to some fun stuff, <laughs> you know, because I said I was going to do that. And but uh, you know, these people, these people are criminals. So I get, I get a little pissed off because I think that's the right thing to do. Because, you know, if nobody gets pissed off at criminals, they're just going to keep on keeping on because this stuff doesn't get coverage. Because these people are are there exactly for that purpose, to cover this stuff, cover it up, cover up their tracks. Um, really, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, if you see us today and you want to get involved with us because, uh, as you can tell, we're pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much a bunch of loopy jerks. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's a great description of us because we, we're uh, kind of mean to each other, we're heckling each other and shit. What? Flip it out. No. <laughs> no, you. Uh, like they'll be able to see it. He's got the podium there. And, uh, you know, if you want to join up with us, just don't take anything seriously, honestly. Uh, you can do it for whatever reason you want. You can do it because you're pissed. It's a good reason. You can do it because Scientology is a criminal organization with a tax exempt status and you're paying for them. You can do it because they've covered up murders. You can do it because they abuse children consistently. Whatever, you can do it because it's a lot of fun. Some people just like to come out with us and party. We're- Do what? What do you guys actually do? We do worldwide protests monthly. We do weekly protests. Physical or digital? Keep talking. Physical, Physical. what do you think we're doing here? <laughs> Physical we're bringing this to the real world. Come on. Have you actually made any sort of effect on the org other than just pulling their eyes? We've, going, we've made some pretty serious effects, in, especially in, in terms of press Negative coverage. press coverage of the uh, Scientology organization. What have done in New York? Has a single person blown the org in New York as a result of your efforts? Uh, there has been a few people in New York who have previously been Scientologists who were uh, too afraid to speak out against the Church of Scientology because they know of the Church's blackmailing policies against the Church of Scientology members because when you uh, undergo counseling in the Church of Scientology they write down everything and this is for something they call PC file and uh, this is something that they'll use against you if you leave and because of our presence there have been a few members who are ex-Scientologists who have found a voice again and are willing to speak up this is New York City locally yeah, we've just I, I personally had somebody blow, which is what they call leaving, from talking to me. Yes. Yeah, I mean we have uh, we actually have a couple of people that uh, one of them uh, ex flew for now. He actually uh, ended up leaving not too long ago, and he comes out and protests with us all the time. I mean, if you if you look around in one of our protests, he makes himself very very obvious. He runs around with a uh, with an iPod and speakers uh, strapped to his belt. Uh, which uh, the iPod's blurting out the, uh, what they call the OT3, um, which apparently, if, uh, if you hear it and you're not actually up to that level yet, you'll die of uh, ammonia, ammonia or something like that, yeah. uh, according to Scientology. Basically, uh, you know, uh, speaking of which, I mean, because uh, 75 billion years ago, uh, the evil galactic overlord Xenu, <laughs> in order to combat overpopulation on his home planet, decided to round up all the aliens, aliens Put them into spaceships that looked a lot like, hey, 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 hold on, don't interrupt me. You get the soap. You get the soap. You get the soap. <laughs> yeah, we've also, we've, we've made sure that uh, a lot of people actually love the church. Their population is down a fucking lot, worldwide and locally. Uh, we've made a lot of people, well, more than, uh, more than I guess usual, not join. 
Uh, they've been, they would try and talk to people more around just with